हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो द फर्स्ट टॉपिक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज अबाउट ट्रेडिशनल वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग सिस्टम इन इंडिया तो लास्ट टू थ्री इयर्स वी हैड ड्रॉट सिचुएशन एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ विच देर हैज बीन लॉट ऑफ फोकस ऑन ड्रेन वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैड ऑल्सो बीन फोकसिंग ऑन रिजुविनेटिंग अवर ट्रेडिशनल वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग सिस्टम्स सो देर कैन बी अ क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस बिकॉज देर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स वी हैव अ रिच कल्चर अबाउट इट so the first uh, thing we are going to discuss regarding uh, this traditional water harvesting is the one which is followed in the western coastal plains which is called as the virdas so as you are seeing in the uh, diagram uh, in the image there is a shallow well and it's called the virdas which are dug in low depressions called as jhils which are tanks they were built by the nomadic maldharis who uh, identified this depressions by studying the flow of water during the monsoons so it's on the western coast and it's virdas the next one we are going to see is the kul kuls are water channels found in precipitous mountain region to himachal pradesh and uh, jammu kashmir uh, we find it and uh, where the terrain is muddy the kul is lined with rocks to keep it fr uh, from being clogged and uh, some kuls are even 10 km long and have existed for centuries so the crucial portion of the kul is its head which is at the glacier which is to be tapped and uh, this must be kept free of the debris in the village the kul leads to a circular tank from which the flow of water can be regulated so it's found in himachal pradesh and uh, in jammu and kashmir kul the next we are going to see is the jhings so jhings are in ladakh so ladakh uh, is a dry land as we know and the cultivation is very difficult here the entire entire cultivated area of uh, 19000 hectares depends on irrigation from waters of the melting of the snow through long winding streams uh, from the upper mountain reaches so at the sowing time it is so cold and the uh, water from the snow melt is very limited owing to this uh, what they do is uh, this zing thing and it's a small tank and uh, the stored glacier water is used for uh, following day in the fields so each village has a large network of canals and zings so zing uh, is in ladakh the next we are going to see is nola so nola is uh, found in the hill areas of the uttaranchal and uh, these are small wells or ponds in which water is collected by making a strong wall across a stream they are primarily used for drinking purpose the big shady trees were planted uh, surrounding the nolas to reduce the evaporation and these nolas are a common structure in the kumao but uh, uh, less developed in garhwal which is blessed with perennial rivers so nola in is, is in uttaranchal the next we are seeing is khatris so khatris are structures which are uh, 10 by 12 feet and they are found uh, in the hilly regions of hamirpur kangra mandi districts of himachal pradesh and uh, the usual capacity is around uh, 30000 to 50000 liters and uh, different khatris are built uh, dug on particular hills but at the same level so this is about khatris so uh, we'll go through uh, revise all those things like in the trans himalayan region we find the zing which is in ladakh then the kul in the himachal and jammu the nola in the uh, uttaranchal when in eastern himalayas there is a apatani apatani which is in arunachal apatani is also a tribe uh, is related to this so these are basically terrace plots connected by inlet and outlet channels then in northeastern hill we find the zabo in in, uh, in nagaland then we have bamboo drip irrigation in meghalaya where water from the streams in the hills is brought to the plains via bamboo pipes for drip irrigation then in assam we find dongs which are ponds and then uh, in the indo gangetic plain we find digis which are small square or circular reservoir fed by canals from rivers in delhi then we in the thar desert we have the bauris or the bears these are community wells in rajasthan this you must be knowing then uh, underground uh, tank is found uh, in rajasthan which is called as tankas then uh, in uh, ardhan check dams called as johards are also found in alwar district of rajasthan so these were basically uh, what we discussed were uh, about the traditional water system and uh, they could be asked like uh, four options will be given and uh, they will ask to match the each of them 
so uh, th that can be a handy question which can come in prelims so the next topic we are going to see today is about shifting cultivation so again shifting cultivation is followed in india in a uh, uh, forest regions by these uh, tribes and uh, in different regions they are known by different ways so again a similar question can come on shifting cultivation so shifting cultivation is basically for known as jhum in assam then it's called as punam krishi in kerala then it's called podu in andhra pradesh and orissa then uh, it's called as bevar mashan penda and bira in different parts of madhya pradesh so basically where forests are found they, what they do is they cut down the trees uh, and about 20 lakh hectares of forest are cleared every year by felling and burning these trees and shrubs so these uh, clearings are cultivated under very crude and extravagant methods for two or three years and then abundant when fertility dwindles or soil erosion makes it unfit so basically this is a very crude method which is form, uh, followed by these tribes and the various uh, crops grown include paddy, buckwheat, maize, millets, tobaccos, some vegetables, bananas and uh, basically uh, zooming is uh, done in dry deciduous forest so where uh, burning is uh, easy and it's a wasteful practice uh, in difficult terrain obviously it supports very uh, sparse population so it's not a modern technique of uh, farming but there is a counter point of view also that shifting cultivation is good for forest in a way but uh, that's a uh, part of a traditional knowledge what we can say so this was basically about uh, shifting cultivation and you need to remember that uh, various names like Joom in uh, uh, Assam, then Podu in Andhra Pradesh and uh, Orissa, then in Kerala it is now known by some name. So in Madhya Pradesh it is known as Bevar and all those, those things so you need to remember them. Now the third uh, topic we are going to see today is uh, Sathya. So what is this Sathya? So Satya is basically a resource kit uh, which is uh, launched by Ministry of Health and F Family Welfare and it includes Satya Salah, Salah uh, a mobile app for adolescents. So it's a part of a Rashtriya Kishore Swasthya Karikram, RKSK program. So it's basically in adolescence there, there are various development in the human body and uh, we have uh, various uh, clues and questions about what this is thing is. So Satya can help in a better way in uh, doing this like uh, in the picture you are seeing uh, various questions being arised. Uh, so that's about Satya and, uh, and this is a program which is a uh, intervention under the program in the introduction of peer educators which are called as Satya. So these Satyas will act as catalyst for generating demand for uh, adolescent health services and imparting age appropriate knowledge on key adolescent uh, health uh, issues to their peer uh, groups. So the RKSK that is the Rashtri uh, Kishore Swasthya Karyakram uh, includes six strategic priorities for adolescents which include nutrition, sexual and reproductive health, non-communicable diseases, substance misuse, injuries and uh, violence. So violence includes gender based violence and mental health. So and uh, the fact uh, check is that uh, India is a home to 253 million adolescents which is the largest in the world in terms of absolute numbers. So as a result of which uh, a program is necessary and Satya app is handy in this case. The fourth topic we are going to study today is about the Pradhan Mantri Matritva. Suraksha Abhiyan. So what is this Abhiyan all about? So this Abhiyan is uh, aim is to provide fixed day assured comprehensive and quality antenatal care universally to all pregnant women on the 9th of every month. Antenatal is uh, before pregnancy and postnatal is after pregnancy. So basically uh, this Abhiyan is for a prenatal that uh, antenatal that is uh, uh, before pregnancy and uh, it proposes to on 9th of every month uh, to give uh, quality comprehensive and fixed day assured uh, care universally and it's a package of antenatal care service which would be provided to pregnant women in their second and third trimesters 
support from the private sector doctors to supplement the efforts of the government is also included in it and the identification and follow up of uh, high risk pregnancies and red stickers should be added on the mother and child protection cards of women with high risk pregnancies and uh, unesco is uh, helping uh, in this initiative and uh, it includes the obg by specialist uh, which i don't know who are they then radiologist uh, physicians working in the private sector are encouraged to volunteer for the campaign and there is just uh, encouragement no coercion okay uh, okay so this was about uh, pradhan mantri matritva suraksha yojana and now we'll move towards the next topic which is the fire corals so what are fire corals so these are basically critically endangered corals corals you must be knowing what it is uh, like they are the uh, animals uh, zoo and in the sea uh, which we find and uh, uh, they are very beautiful and they uh, they are indicators of a rich uh, environmental health of a uh, ocean or a uh, what a body and uh, what we are discussing today is about fire corals which are critically endangered and they look very close to what jellyfish look likes and uh, their distribution uh, is uh, like they are found in indonesia and then gulf of chirikyu panama pacific province possibly extinct from uh, australia uh, indonesia malaysia panama singapore and thailand so threads are that uh, they are collected for decoration and jewelry trade so this group is also sensitive to temperature rise and is thought to have completely disappeared from the majority of the marine uh, areas possibly because of the growing global warming uh, related bleaching effects so this is about fire corals and a question might just come up in prelims now the sixth topic we are going to study is about the global geoparks network so this is a old topic uh, but upsc uh, has this knack of asking something uh, off bit like uh, this year in the mains they asked about magridge commission and uh, most of us did not have any idea of what is magridge commission so this is global geoparks network and uh, it's a initiative by unesco and it was established in 1998 and it's managed under the body's uh, ecological and earth sciences division and it seeks for the promotion and conservation of the planet's geological heritage as well as it encourages the sustainable research and development of the concerned communities so it's uh, basically that a geopark uh, will be there and it will be a nationally protected area which will contain a number of geological heritage sites of uh, particular importance rarity or aesthetic and this earth heritage uh, sites are a part of an integrated concept of the protection education and sustainable development there are around uh, 54 geoparks worldwide and india does not have any geopark the seventh topic today we are going to discuss is about soni yojana so our prime minister uh, has been uh, inaugurating this uh, uh, project and uh, it was launched uh, and soni stands for saurashtra narmada avtaran irrigation yojana at sanudra of jamnabnagar district of gujarat so soni yojana is uh, basically a multi purpose project that aims to solve the water problems of the parsh saurashtra region of gujarat okay and the key facts relating to it are that uh, it's a linking project where the water will be filled in the irrigation dams that are already equipped with canal network under this project 115 dams in the saurashtra region will be filled with excess water from the sardar sarovar dam and around 10 dams in reservoirs of rajkot uh, jamnagar morbi districts will be filled with water from narmada river and it involves making pipe canals instead of conventional local canals which has uh, led to no acquisition of land for the project so it's a innovative win win kind of a project and uh, the network of canals will comprise of 1125 km network of pipelines that will help to channel water into the farms so the background of this is that the saurashtra region of gujarat comprises of 11 districts and they face drought like situations often and have been reeling under severe water scarcity due to scanty rainfall so our uh, soni yojana was launched in 2012 when prime minister Mr. Modi was the Chief Minister of Gujarat, and now it is being implemented in phase-wise project. But uh, like uh, 
मोदी हैज बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट इट एंड ही हैज ऑल्सो रिसेंटली इनोग्रेटेड समथिंग रिलेटेड टू इट सो क्वेश्चन माइट जस्ट कम अप वॉट इज सोनी योजना एंड दिस इज हेन्स हेल्पफुल फॉर यू the next topic we are going to discuss is about conspiracy uh, cases so in the indian freedom struggle there are various conspiracy cases like the alipur conspiracy case then there is a merit conspiracy then there is a kanpur conspiracy muzaffarpur conference conspiracy so all these uh, things are like confusing and uh, you may go wrong so we will uh, at one shot uh, uh, see uh, all these conspiracy cases so the first uh, is about the muzaffar conspiracy case so it basically happened in 1908 and it was an attempt uh, to kill uh, kings ford who is who was the judge of muzaffarpur and praful chaki and kudiram bose uh, made an attempt to kill him but uh, they killed instead of him some women uh, british women so uh it was like uh, it was a failed attempt and uh, later on praful chaki did suicide and kudiram bose was i guess hanged so this is about muzaffarpur conspiracy and alipur conspiracy case is also related to muzaffar conspiracy so it was like uh, anushilan samiti who was uh, behind all this so under the alipur conspiracy case uh, which is also in 1908 Uh, Aurobindo Ghosh was an extremist was arrested and there are various details but uh, this is the upar upar wala part then uh, in 1911 we have the Delhi conspiracy case and this Delhi conspiracy case was like uh, 1911 may uh, the capital was shifted from Kolkata to Delhi so there were there had to be a Delhi darbar which was there and the viceroy lord hadinge was uh, coming from Kolkata to Delhi so there was a procession and uh, this guys uh, had decided uh, to kill him uh, to assassinate him but however kuch gaddar the unhone news leak kar diya and it failed uh, uh, failed yeah. so sachin sanyal and ras bihari bose were accused of attempting to assassinate lord hardinge but then uh, we know ras bihari bose uh, later escaped and uh, now we will uh, see the fourth uh, topic which is uh, fourth conspiracy case that is the kanpur kanpur conspiracy case which happened in 1924 so this was basically a, a conspiracy by communist uh, guys and uh, the british government started a case against four communists namely the muzaffar ahmed the sa dangi shaukat usmani and nalini uh, gupta so the government had alleged the communist uh, that uh, they wanted to deprive the king the british king of the so when it is of british india so basically it was about overthrowing the british rule and this is basically called a uh, kanpur conspiracy case and it happened in 1924 now in 1925 we will see the kakuri conspiracy case uh, which happened on august 9 and 10 revolutionaries were held up for eight down train from saranpur to lucknow uh, and uh, they looted this train at kakuri uh, with uh, the official railway cash and for this uh, loot uh, ashfaqullah khan ram prasad bismil and roshan lahri were hanged okay so this was happened in 1924 and then we have the lahore conspiracy case in which the bhagat singh sukhdev rajguru assassinated sonders uh, a police official uh, who had uh, beaten up lala rajput rai while they were uh, opposing the simon commission and lala rajput rai died in the afterwards due to this beating up so to uh, avenge uh, his death uh, these people uh, assassinated sonders and uh, now we will see the merit conspiracy case so merit conspiracy case happened in 1929 and uh, it was again a conspiracy case like of the kanpur conspiracy case which happened in uh, 1921 and uh, merit conspiracy case uh, happened in 1929 and uh, 31 communist and other persons were arrested on 15th march 1929 and the charges were that these persons conspired to overthrow the british government of india through strikes and other militant methods so the the various people who were uh, arrested uh, included the muzaffar ahmed the sa dange s v gate जी अधिकारी दैन पी सी जोशी एस एस मिरजकर शौकत उस्मानी फिलिप्स थ्रेट एंड अदर्स 
so this was basically the all the conspiracy cases and uh, i hope uh, from now you will not uh, confuse in these things the ninth topic we are going to see today is about negative income tax rate so basically uh, this term came up in economic survey this year and uh, it's basically related to universal uh, basic income like ubi dena chahiye ya nahi dena chahiye so this is a concept related to that and uh, as we see what is the definition of negative income tax uh, is that it's a guaranteed minimum income plan which was advocated by economist Milton Friedman in 1920 1962 where the income subsidies were to be provided to persons or families whose income falls below a certain level like in India it's BPL so the negative income tax uh, would allow the claimants to receive income through a simple filing of tax returns rather than through claiming through the claiming of welfare benefits so ideally it is eliminating the need for a complex welfare bureaucracy so now we have uh, various welfare uh, welfare schemes and uh, there is a huge bureaucracy which is involved in it and there are leakages uh, in that there is corruption there is red tapism so basically the idea is that you give the money directly into the hand of the people and the people will decide what to take and what not to take from the market so this is uh, basically the idea behind it and the primary criticism of uh, negative income uh, tax is that it discourages some low income individuals from working like if one guy receives uh, to $2500 from the government for not working at all versus a 5000 for dozens of work uh, dozens of hours of work some people will choose not to work because they would uh, rather have no more leisure time even if it means less money so basically this idea needs to be debated more and uh, re research should happen and then it should be implemented uh, another criticism includes that uh, negative income tax system cannot eliminate the complexities associated with the welfare system because taxpayers who fund the subsidies demand accountability from the taxpayers who are receive the subsidies okay so this demand necessitates a complex system of rules and oversight intended to prevent the abuse of the system which in a country like india is nearly impossible the 10th topic we are going to uh, see today is about the islands in india or about the island in india mein and uh, there can be some factual data which can uh, come up, come up in prelims so the what we will see is basically hamare uh, idhar ek lakshadweep group group of islands hai aur ek andaman and nicobar group of islands hai so something related to it like in north andaman we find the narcodam island uh, uh, so narcodam island is basically an extinct volcano and then in the middle uh, andaman we have the barren island which is a dormant uh, volcano and recently there was news that uh, this barren island was a uh, yeah, volcano was there in you know, barren island active volcano volcano so see uh, from north, north to south if we see like uh, first we have the north andaman then we have the middle andaman then the south andaman then the little andaman and then the nicobar okay so it's n m s l n m s l okay so the first three are north andaman middle andaman south andaman are togetherly called as great andaman and be, uh, between this uh, great andaman and little andaman is what is called as the duncan passage so it's basically there and uh, between the ninth andaman and the nicobar little andaman and the nicobar so like between the andaman and nicobar there is a ten channel so and uh, in the nicobar there is a kar nicobar and uh, there is a indira point which is the uh, farthest uh, lowest point uh, on uh, in india uh, so this is basically about this uh, andaman nicobar islands and if you see towards lakshadweep islands so these are coral islands and the between the lakshadweep group and the miniko coral islands there is a ninth channel and between the miniko and maldives there is a eighth channel okay so as we are seeing duncan passage tenth channel ninth channel eighth channel so you need to remember this and uh, that's how it is and well basically the difference between andaman nicobar and lakshadweep island so andaman nicobar are basically volcanic islands which represent a submarine volcanism while lakshadweep island is a union of coral islands entirely different from andaman nicobar islands and this andaman nicobar islands represent the surface of the submerged folds with the extension of the himalayas precisely the arakan yoma fold 
जो आप म्यांमार में देखते हो अरब का न्योमा फोल्ड वो नीचे एक्सटेंड होके फिर अंदमान निकोबार के में वो बाहर आता है लाइक सो इट्स अ कंटिन्यूस रेंज बट मिडल पार्ट इज समर्स इन द बे ऑफ बंगाल सो दिस इज देयर एट देन इन लक्षद्वीप वी इट कंप्राइजेस ऑफ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ डेड कोरल्स एंड देयर आर वेरियस थिंग वेरियस कोरल्स लाइक फ्रिंजिंग कोरल बैरियर कोरल एंड एटॉल कोरल ओके and then in andaman we find that they are these islands are made up of uh, granite rocks and have a uh, high hills and peaks for example the sadal peak in uh, andaman nikobar and then in lakshadweep we have calcium rich soil which is filled with uh, organic limestone then in andaman we have different types of uh, forest like equatorial climate is there then we have even tropical rain forest there there is a huge diversity but uh, lakshadweep has a scattered vegetation of palm species so this was basically the difference between andaman islands and uh, lakshadweep islands so now we will uh, go through some islands some factual data like uh, andaman nicobar we have seen that it's a continuation of arakan yoma mountain ranges of myanmar then nicobar is just 147 km from sumatra island so it is very closer to sumatra rather than to delhi then uh, mazuli island is the largest river in island of world and it's located on brahmaputra in assam the new mur island uh, is basically on the ganges and brahmaputra delta river and it's a distributed uh, disputed site between india and bangladesh and recently the case was won by bangladesh so new mur island no more uh, belongs to india but it belongs to bangladesh The Sagar Island is in uh, West Bengal, and it's a continental shelf of Bay of Bengal. And there is even a festival there, which Sagar Island festival. So that is one thing you need to remember. Then the Villar Island, uh, I think recently it was uh, renamed, and it was named after uh, our uh, late President A P J Abdul Kalam. So it's basically in Odisha, and it is an integrated missile test range facility. The next uh, island we are going to discuss is about the Hope Island, which is on the coast of Kakinada, Andhra Pradesh, and it houses the Satish Dhawan Space Center. So, uh, so and Hope Island was uh, recently in news because uh, of this uh, olive ridley turtles. So, a lot of oli- dead olive ridley turtles were found on this Hope Island. So, that's uh, environmental distress. and then the sri horikota island which is in andhra pradesh again and this is a satellite launch center so various satellites we see are launched from this island and then we have the narkodam island which is an extinct volcano island in andaman sea then the barayan island is the dormant volcano island then the kasthavithu kasthavithu island which was forcibly given to sri lanka by indira gandhi in 1974 but now uh, in uh, sri lanka is uh, having uh, kattavithu island is harassing our fishermen from tamil nadu so there are being uh, demands raised to get back this island but virtually i think it's not possible and then we have the selaset island which is a group of seven islands which is known as mumbai today 